So let's start learning about how to draw Lewis stop structures for compounds that contain double and triple bonds. The process is going to be exactly the same as before. We're not going to know ahead of time that we're dealing with a double or triple bond. That's something that we're going to figure out by trial and error. So let's start with the electron mass. We have two carbons. Carbons in group four. So I have four electrons times two. And I have four hydrogens. So one electron times four. And we have a total of 12 electrons to build our Lewis stop structure. Hydrogen can't be a central atom, so I'm going to connect the two carbons and just distribute my hydrogens. Sometimes students distribute the hydrogens a little bit differently. They do like three hydrogens on one carbon and one hydrogen on the other carbon. It won't work out, but that's difficult to tell until you have some experience. And so again, trial and error, just be patient, just use a pencil, just erase. Um, the first thing I worry about after I get my skeletal structure down is I look at my octet. I want to make sure that all the atoms, except for hydrogen, hydrogen is good like that, but all the other atoms have eight electrons around them. So right now carbon has two, four, six. So I'll add two more electrons or one lone pair. So now it has two, four, six, eight. Similar situation over here, two, four, six and then we'll do seven, eight. So once I look at the octets and fix all the octets, then I go back and make sure that I only use 12 electrons. Two things, always, octets and electron mass. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And that doesn't seem right. I use too many electrons. I don't have 14 electrons. When you don't have enough of something, you're forced to share. Maybe forced to share more than you even want to, right? But um, the same thing will happen in a Lewis stop structure. There's not enough electrons to satisfy everyone's octet. So now the structure has to do a double or a triple bond, which is just more sharing than a single bond. This is gibberish. Cross this out, erase it. There's not 14 electrons, so this isn't gonna happen. I'm gonna try to do one double bond. The only place to put the double bond is between the two carbons. Hydrogen can only do one thing, which is make one single bond. That's it. Hydrogen is very boring. I'll attach those hydrogens again. Now I need to look at the octets. Two, four, six, eight. So carbon's good. Two, four, six, eight. So that carbon's good as well. Check the 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So now we have a valid structure because we've satisfied the octet and we used 12 electrons. The tip off that we had to use a double bond was that we didn't have enough electrons available. Some more practice. Let's see if we can draw a Lewis stop structure for nitrogen gas. Start with our electron mass. So we have two nitrogens, group five. And since there's two of them, I know I have 10 electrons to build my structure. Not really a central atom, there's just two of them. So I'll connect the nitrogen to the nitrogen, and I always prioritize satisfying the octet. So I'm going to have to put six electrons around each one of those nitrogens. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14 electrons that I use, but I only have 10 electrons. So first off, we know this structure is no good. We use too many electrons. So when you don't have enough electrons, consider double bonds and triple bonds. So let's start with a double bond. So if I double bond the two nitrogens, that means each nitrogen has four electrons, two fours. So I'll put another four on each one. Now we're good to go with the octets, two, four, six, eight. All together though, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I've used twelve electrons, still not good enough. I need to only use ten. So if a double bond 
doesn't result in the right number of valence electrons and you still don't have enough, consider two double bonds or even a triple bond. So if I triple bond the two nitrogens, they each currently have six electrons, two, four, six. And then I just need to put one lone pair on each one. Two, four, six, eight. They're good to go there. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Now I've just used the ten electrons. So diatomic nitrogen has a triple bond in it. So we're going to start with the electron map. I have two carbons. So four electrons times two. Three hydrogens, group one, so one electron times three. And then chlorine's in group seven, there's just one of them, so um, the chlorine will donate seven electrons to the structure. This gives us a total of 18 electrons. I'm going to start off my structure with the carbon in the middle. Remember, chlorine and any of our group seven atoms they're pretty electronegative, they're not that good at sharing. So typically, not 100% of the time, but typically you want to put them in terminal or outside position. So I'll just connect my chlorine right here on the outside. I'm going to get all my octets satisfied. Currently carbon has two, four, six. So I need to add another two electrons to that. Two, four, six. Seven, eight. Hydrogens are good to go like that. Two. So we're going to need six more electrons or three lone pairs around the chlorine. Once you get all the octets satisfied, then do a total count. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. That's not going to work. We only have eighteen electrons to build this structure. So this is gibberish. And since I don't have enough electrons, I'm going to use a double bond to see if that'll fix the problem. Same connectivity, but I'm going to double bond the two carbons. Now looking at the carbon, two, four, six, eight. So it's satisfied. I don't have to add any electrons. Two, four, six, eight on that carbon. Chlorine still needs six more electrons. And then octets are good. Let me check that I only used 18. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I know that that's correct structure. I used 18 electrons and I satisfied the octets on all of the atoms um, except for hydrogen. Next one. Hydrogen gives us one electron. Carbon, four. And nitrogen, five electrons for a total of 10 electrons. I'm going to put carbon in the middle because carbon is the least electronegative and hydrogen just can't be in the middle. Again, I always like to satisfy the octets first and sometimes, or a lot of the times, you know, you're not going to have a double or a triple bond. So then you're done with the problem. So that's always a good approach. Start with just filling out the octets and assuming at first that you just have single bonds. Hydrogen's okay. Carbon only has two bonds. So one, two, three, four. I'll do five, six, seven, eight. Nitrogen just has one bond. So it's gonna need six more electrons. So two, four, six, eight. So both carbon and nitrogen have eight electrons now. Now you have to check, did you just use 10? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I used 14 electrons. It's way too many and we only had 10. So I don't know if you see this pattern developing yet, but if you can remember it, it's a good trip, trick. It'll save you a little bit of time. When you're in the hall by four electrons, that means that you're going to have to double up twice. So you're either going to need a triple bond or two double bonds. If you're at just 
short two electrons, then a double bond will usually fix the situation. But if you're short four electrons, that's more extreme. Cross this out, this is no good. Since I'm short four electrons, I'm gonna go for a triple bond. Carbon then with that triple bond is good to go. Two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen just has the triple bond. Two, four, six. So I'll put seven, eight over there. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's the correct structure. Some more practice. We're going to start with the electron mass. So carbon gives us four electrons. We have two hydrogens. They're in group one. And then oxygen's in group six. So we have a total of 12 electrons to build this structure. Carbon will be my central atom because it's the least electronegative out of all the atoms. This is oxygen and hydrogen. I'll try to satisfy the octet. So right now carbon has two, four, six, so it'll need a lone pair to get up to eight. So two, four, six, eight. Oxygen just has two. So I'm gonna add six more electrons around the oxygen. So now it has two, four, six, eight. Once you get your octet satisfied, go back and make sure you use uh, the right number of electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. That's no good. We use too many electrons, which means um, we probably have a double bond in there. We need a double bond. The only place here for the double bond would be between the oxygen and the carbon. Hydrogen can never ever do a double bond. So at this point, carbon is good to go. Two, four, six, eight. Our oxygen has two fours. So I'll do six and eight. And I want to check that I use 12. Two, four, six, eight, and 12. Moving on. This is, in my opinion, the hardest one on the handout here. This combination of elements forms a very specific shape. It's known as carboxylic acid. If you take a nutri nutrition class or as you continue and you're studying biochem or organic chemistry, biology, you're going to hear a lot about carboxylic acids. They're an important um, functional group in a lot of biological systems. So I know that I'm looking at a carboxylic acid. It might also be written as CO2H. And then there's always something else attached to it, but you can attach whatever you want to it. Here, there's just a hydrogen attached to the carboxylic acid part. So the carboxylic acid is going to look like this. It has carbon attached to an oxygen, and then an oxygen attached to a hydrogen. Then again, the rest of it can be whatever. In this case, we just have a hydrogen on the other side. Let's do our electron math and figure out how many double bonds we need in the carboxylic acid. So we have hydrogen. There's actually two of them, right? One, two. So we'll do two electrons, one carbon, four electrons, and two oxygens, which give us 12 electrons, six times two. That's a total of 18 electrons. So if I go ahead and I fix the octets, so, Two, four, six, seven, eight. Two, I'll need six on this oxygen. And this oxygen has four, so I'll put four more. So if I go ahead and fix all of that, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Then I'm off by two. Again, if you don't have enough, you need to do a double bond. With our carboxylic acid, the double bond is going to be between the carbon and the oxygen that doesn't have anything on it. That's really hard to know. You just kind of have to memorize it. So I erased the, I would just, 
I was trying to save space here, but I would just cross it out and start again. So the carbon does not have a lone pair on it. Two, four, six, eight, it's good to go with the double bond. Our oxygen has four now, and I'll need four additional electrons. And then this will stay the same here. Let's double check. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, eight. At this point in your chemical education, um, especially in a testing situation, if you got nervous and you drew something like this, I would accept this as well. This is not what the carboxylic acid looks like, but if we break it down and we check the octets and we check the total number of electrons, it's an acceptable structure. Again, it's not the best structure out there, but you haven't violated any principles with this structure. There's two, four, six, eight around the carbon, two, four, six, eight around this oxygen, two, four, six, eight around this oxygen, and then two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. You just use 18 electrons. But again, if, especially if you're continuing and you're going to take more science courses, remember that this is your carboxylic acid and this is the best way to draw those dot structure. All right, one more. We have NOS. We want to consider who should be our central atom. Well, fluorine is the most electronegative. And oxygen is the second most electronegative atom on the periodic table. So I'm going to go with nitrogen as my central atom because of this group, it's the least electronegative and it's going to be the best at sharing the electron. We'll do our electron math. So five from nitrogen, six from oxygen, and seven from fluorine. Uh, that's a grand total of 18 electrons. We'll do nitrogen in the middle, oxygen, and fluorine. Complete those octets. And let's do a total count. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. The structure used 20, but I only had 18. That means I need to put a double bond somewhere. Where is going to be the best place to put a double bond? Well, we are just talking about how fluorine is so electronegative, it doesn't like to share. So I would avoid at all costs double bonds to fluorine. Fluorine never double bonds. It just doesn't want to share. So you're going to put your double bonds between your nitrogen and your oxygen. Let's complete the octets. I'll put six more on fluorine. So it has two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen has two, four, six. So it's going to need one lone pair on top to get up to eight. And then oxygen currently has four. So I'll put four more electrons around that. Let's check. Did we use 18? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So we're good to go.